Think Again by Adam Grant teaches us how to rethink our ideas and be open to new ways of looking at things. The book helps us understand why it's important to question our beliefs, change our mind when needed, and keep learning. Grant uses real-life stories and simple examples to show how rethinking can lead to better decisions, smarter conversations, and more creativity in life. Having more than 8,000 reviews on Amazon, this number alone tells us something. In this video, I will be telling you four ideas from the book that I consider to be the most important ones. So with no further delay, I will begin with first one. Adapt your strategies and ideas to a constantly changing world. In 2009, BlackBerry smartphones were incredibly popular, holding almost 50% of the market. Influential figures like Bill Gates, President Obama, and Oprah claimed they couldn't live without their Blackberries. However, just five years later, Blackberry's market share plummeted to a mere 1%. The reason? Blackberry's creator, Mike Lazaridis, refused to change his perspective. When Apple released the iPhone in 2007 and began gaining market share, Lazaridis believed that most people would still prefer a device that could mainly make calls and handle emails. He couldn't imagine that consumers would want anything more than what a BlackBerry could offer. But before we criticize Lazaridis, it's important to consider that many of us might have made the same mistake. As business leaders or entrepreneurs, we often take pride in sticking to our beliefs and staying true to our ideas. However, the challenge with this approach is that the world is changing faster than ever, and access to new information is growing rapidly. For example, by 2011, the average person was consuming five times more information each day than they did in 1986. Given this rapid pace of change, it's not enough to just know how to think. We also need to know how to rethink. This means being open to new information and willing to adjust our beliefs and strategies accordingly. Scientists, for instance, are always curious about what they don't know, and they frequently update their views based on new data. Instead of starting with answers, they start with questions. They test their ideas carefully and rely on evidence rather than gut feelings. If you're a business leader, you can adopt a similar mindset by treating your business strategy as a theory to be tested. A study of Italian startups found that those founders who thought scientifically about their businesses earned more revenue and attracted more customers than those who didn't. Scientifically minded leaders were more successful because they were more willing to pivot and change their business models when things weren't going as planned. Second, negotiation strategy. How do you convince someone that you're right? Adam Grant used to think that persuasion was all about overwhelming the other person with evidence to prove them wrong. But he's learned that effective persuasion involves much more than just hitting someone with a logic. Here are some key strategies that great negotiators use. One, finding common ground. Most of us approach debates and negotiations like a tug of war, trying to pull the other person to our side by bombarding them with reasons why we're right. However, the best negotiators treat it more like a dance, where they sometimes step back to allow the other person to move forward. Instead of only focusing on why they're right and the other person is wrong, they also highlight areas where they can agree. So, the next time you're in a negotiation, remember that you don't need to win every argument. Agreeing on some points can actually help bring the other person closer to your side. Two, less is more. Many people think that debates are like a pair of scales. If you pile on enough arguments, you'll tip the scales in your favor. But top negotiators know that less can be more. They focus on presenting a few strong arguments rather than many weaker ones. This is because weaker arguments can dilute the impact of stronger ones. If you offer too many reasons, your opponent can easily dismiss the weaker ones. And once they start rejecting some arguments, it's easier for them to dismiss your entire case. 
Three, being curious like a scientist. While average negotiators act like preachers who only push their own ideas or prosecutors who aggressively attack their opponent's ideas, the best negotiators are more like scientists. They don't just preach or prosecute. Instead, they show curiosity about the other person's viewpoint. They ask questions like, are you really saying you can't see any truth in my proposal? This approach opens up a dialogue rather than just a confrontation. Third, how to change people's beliefs. In 2018, at a hospital in Quebec, Canada, a young mother named Marie Hélène refused to vaccinate her premature baby, Toby, against measles. The medical staff knew that one person might be able to help, doctor. Arnaud Gagneur, known as the vaccine whisperer, Dr. Gagneur uses a method called motivational interviewing to help people reconsider their choices. Motivational interviewing is a technique that encourages people to change their minds by helping them discover their own reasons for doing so. Instead of trying to convince someone by presenting your arguments, this approach focuses on understanding the other person's perspective and what might motivate them to change. Here's how it works. One, start with curiosity and humility. The interviewer begins by genuinely trying to understand why the person holds their current beliefs. Dr. Gagneur asked Marie Hélène open-ended questions about her thoughts and fears regarding the measles vaccine. Two, listen more than you talk. Instead of trying to argue or convince, the interviewer listens carefully. Dr. Gagnure didn't jump in to disagree with Marie Hélène. Instead, he acknowledged her fears and concerns, showing that he understood her point of view. This technique is called reflective listening. It helps the person feel heard and respected. Three, highlight. Freedom of choice. The interviewer emphasizes that the person has the freedom to make their own decision. Dr. Gagneur made it clear to Marie Hélène that it was entirely her choice whether or not to vaccinate Toby. This approach is crucial because people often resist change when they feel their freedom to choose is being taken away. By the end of the interview, Marie Hélène decided to vaccinate Toby and her other children too. The key to her decision was that she felt heard, respected, and free to make her own choice. Fourth, introduce rethinking culture in your business. Rethinking is important not just for individuals, but for organizations too. A good example of this is what happened with NASA's Columbia Space Shuttle in 2003. When the shuttle took off, a piece of foam broke off. The NASA ground team didn't think much of it because foam had fallen off in the past without causing problems. However, this time, it was a serious issue. The foam damaged the shuttle, and it broke apart when re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, killing all seven astronauts. Back in 2003, NASA's culture focused heavily on performance. Their main goal was getting things done perfectly every time, leaving little room for questioning or rethinking decisions. This focus on results led to overconfidence, which prevented the team from seeing the real danger. For teams to be better at rethinking their choices, workplaces need to have a learning culture instead. In learning cultures, the goal is growth, and rethinking is a normal part of the process. People are encouraged to question their methods, stay humble, and recognize that they don't know everything. This prevents the kind of overconfidence that led to NASA's mistake. While you might think performance-driven organizations get better results, Research shows that companies with learning cultures are more innovative and make fewer mistakes. A key part of creating a learning culture is providing psychological safety. This means employees feel safe to take risks and admit mistakes without fear of being punished. When people trust their colleagues and managers, they can point out problems and fix them. In contrast, in performance cultures, mistakes are often hidden because employees are afraid of punishment, which means problems don't get solved, like with the Columbia disaster. 
So if you want your team to rethink when needed, don't make failure a bad thing. Mistakes should be seen as learning opportunities, and rethinking is crucial for long-term success and growth in any organization. These were all four key ideas from the book Think Again by Adam Grant. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave your like and subscribe to my channel.